Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. If Dorking Wanderers are to survive in the National League this season, they'll need to do a little more than simply beat Maidenhead at home. The 3-1 win was a positive result to be sure, but Dorking are still teetering above the relegation zone. Well, I mean they are, it's just that the place where we get these league tables has added all the extra games in that were played after this fixture, so it's not exactly how it should look. Still, it gives you a sense that the heat is on and the pressure's high just to stay alive. This Tuesday night fixture brings BOA Nemesis Southend United to Meadowbank, a club that's in such a mess, even we have to give them some sympathy. Well, everyone except that guy. Southend's plight is too messy for us to comprehend, let alone break down here. Yet in spite of their owner being an absolute git, the football team has done surprisingly well this season, at least until the last two months. Six straight defeats has seen the Shrimpers drop out of playoff contention. And with a return of just two goals in those games, Wanderers are eyeing up three points and a clean sheet against a team they've yet to beat ever, although they've only met twice. Still, a win here will put credence in Mark's claim after the York debacle that Dorking could win all of their remaining games, even if Coach Beardy is out of action with a migraine for this one. Defender Samuel Abt is thus promoted into defensive coach duties, which is important because Dorking have a new approach to defending, that is to say, they're no longer willing to let in three goals a game. So obviously the war cry, you know, it's, it's nice to have a good changing room off the back of a good performance, but obviously you know what's coming tonight, the fucking war cry for me is like, we're just gonna, I truly believe we can outfight everybody. I truly believe we can outfight everybody down here 100%. Our record down here is half decent. I said that before the game Saturday. We was on our fucking lowest ebb when we went to their place. We were fucking short of players, everyone was injured. You know what I mean? Baz had, I remember Baz had a play having come back from injury and, and he weren't fucking, he hadn't even trained. I think they're a team you can fucking beat up. Maidenhead Barnet would be a notch above them for physicality, I'll tell you that now. I'm saying this for a reason, they've lost six games on the bounce, right, on the bounce. They're bottom of the form league, six played, naught points, and that is a fucking tough gig. Because even at 2-1 up, you still think they're going to fucking lose. You know how football works. So mentally for them, they've got a tough job down here tonight. Right? Because we're playing well down here. And I believe we can beat everybody up. Right? My war cry will be, you're not going to lose your fucking battles. Because you didn't, Saturday. Interestingly, he plays 3-5-2 every, every game. I've got a hunch he might change it. I've got a hunch he's going to full press us. Let's assume he plays his factory setting because it would be stupid to not think that. 352. A couple of things to note that are really important. The only other thing I wrote down, because it's minimal, minimal information. You know, I do think that we've what we've done brilliantly Saturday was like a stick or twist. I remember Tone and Cookie in particular in front of me, every now and then just fucking hooking the ball forward defensively. And next minute bringing it down and playing. That's a for me, that's the sort of game this will be. I think they can be bullied the fuck out of. And see, it is just a bit like when someone's got a bloody nose, because I, I want us to use the overload and play. But at the same time, when they've lost six games, they've got a bloody nose. Like, you ask questions to people. You see, so, so there might be times when, you know, if it's tight, full press, whatever, and you need me go, Jace, and then we might just go a bit more direct and we'll go and pick up them second balls and we'll put them under pressure. Because they've got a bloody nose at the moment. So you have to fucking, you have to put it on teams like that. This is a game where we are, in my book, massive fucking favourites. Massive favourites in my book for this game, right? As long as we bring the fucking A game that you've all fucking got. You can't have. I feel, I told you, I want to win all fucking eight games now. All nine, I said. And I want this to be the next fucking one. And I know that if you all turn up, like you did Jimmy Saturday, right? If we all fucking turn up, we'll fucking, it'd be fucking hard for a team to beat us down here. It could be 4-2. But it's fucking hard for anyone to beat us down here when we turn up. So we're going to turn up again, individually, OK? All right, good. They've lost six straight games. It's, it's, it's not a good fucking trench to be in. As a manager, like, you just... Obviously, you double question everything you're doing. You read what the press say, what the forums say, and the fans are like, you should change formation, and we've got to change formation. You shouldn't be playing that player. I, I can't envy, if you like, if that makes sense, like, if you, I'm the owner, so realistically, I just ban people that don't like me. Whereas other managers, 
have got a job to worry about. And you can see, even at the highest level, why people might make popular decisions, not necessarily their own decisions. I think it's a real quality to make your own fucking decisions, but I can see why people don't. So there's a chance he might think, right, you know, we're gonna change the way we're playing today. I don't see us not putting in a strong performance. Don't see it. I think we've been really consistently strong down here. The team we're putting out is a strong side. So whether we get lucky and whether it goes our way is a different matter, but I think we'll give a good account. On a bit of a bad run at the moment, yeah, but another three points today will put us closer to playoffs. I find it a little bit embarrassing as well now. Um, I work in London and, and everyone asks what football team you support. You get West Ham, Spurs, Arsenal, and I have to say I'm a South End fan. At the moment they are down, yeah, out of the Football League, second season, and not looking likely to be going back for a while. We're, we're rock bottom at the moment, real rock bottom. Um, the club's now up for sale. If it is sold, different question. Oh, we, just need, we just need an owner who, um, who can put, put money into the club and actually put the club first, get rid of the debts and actually be able to, well, get the transfer embargo lifted would be a good start. I'm going to just assume a lot of stuff going, off, going on behind the scenes that are clearly affecting the players and probably certainly the staff as well. The, the supporter groups have done a really good job at, at putting the pressure on Ron Martin and I think we finally got to the point where now he wants to sell the club and he's admitted he's at fault and he, he's ready to, to sell. So we've lost the last six games um, and that has been a mixture of, there was probably a bit of siege mentality before those six games, so before the start of March when the players hadn't been paid. Oh, I've just got no money, <laughs> can't pay anyone, we literally paid uh, the tax bill within, with about a day to go um, before being wound up. Uh, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's pretty dire. I think we've been to court, I don't know, we've been to court so many times, more times than his mum's been to court. So, um, yeah, it's, it's horrendous. Um, it's just... <laughs> Players weren't paid for ages. There's an embargo that's been in place for most of the season. They haven't been able to bring anybody in, really, for a long time. So the, the squad they've got is the squad that plays. So to answer your question, whether they lock, belong, I'd like to see them in the championship. But that's, that's not a dream, because we've been there with Barry Fry. So um, that's where I'd like to go. The lights have been upgraded, so they'll be a bit better tonight. Yeah. Basically, what is it? Are they all new lights? LEDs, so yeah. a lot better, yeah. Yeah, good, mate. I think it's a 3 4 3, right? So I think they're going to plug the. I think they're actually going to be. Dan? I think it's a 3 4 3. So they'll either just give it to Tone, and then that they'll give it to one man, one ear, and just be fucking compact. Or if they're that stupid to go and press that, it's just a 3 v 2 behind it. When you do attacking dead balls, just remind them that we were good Saturday. Very good. A good warm-up more, are you? Good. Yeah. I think they're going to be fucking defensive. So I think what we might have to do is try and split them with a few third man runs. Right, I think they're going to be like a big bat five. They've got fucking, they've named five defenders and they've taken out that Scott Morris, who's, you know, the little lad from Hemel. I quite like him. I think they're going to be a big bat five and they're just going to try and nick it, nick the ball off us. All good, Mac. You need to create a 4v3 in this game because they're going to they're gonna give the ball to Tony. So you need to create a 4v3 a lot. That'll be your job, mate. Literally, automatically. They're big back five, Jason. They've, got, they've named about 14 centre-halves. Yeah, sure. Naming a fucking game, naming a game, boys, when teams ain't winning games is to fucking remind them first 10-15. Yeah. For all the fucking team talks in the world, if you put it on them first 10-15, all they're thinking about is their last month. Their plan here is to be defensively all right and to fucking hope we get, we, ain't, we ain't an open team anymore. We ain't that fucking side. But he's thinking we are, we ain't that fucking side. The good thing is because of the way they're playing, Dan, we are still defending 4v3. And it's even better now because you ain't picking up probably. So we're always fucking 4v3 defending. But Tony, if you have to put it on the third man run, Josh, what you don't want to do is go in there, Moro, don't be taking your men in there tight, walking them in there, right? 
Let Tony wander, see what he's got, see if Maka can wander in. If need be, fucking go on the third man charge and we'll put the ball on them. Because they're not a team in confidence at the moment. And you have to play to fucking how they're thinking. Fucking formations aside, we are going to win. Joe, we're going to fucking talk to each other. We're going to fucking communicate. We're going to get everything fucking right. So we're going to fucking compete for everything. Talk to your teammate. One goes off the arse, it don't matter. Get the instructions right, okay? Get together and put it on them first 15. Let them know it's a tough game, okay? Come on. Oh, come on. Good luck, boys. Look at that for a barn. It's Aaron Kill, mate. Look. Fucking unbelievable, mate. It's Good unbelievable. Player, really. <laughs> Good player. Wait, He's... fucking train station to this. I know, it's unreal, isn't it? I know, man, I know, man. I know. I think, uh, uh, like you said, 3-4-3, three, three. just keep, they'll probably give it a Tony, wouldn't they? Just keep an eye on it. Yeah. All the best, Kev, mate. Enjoy yourself, Thank mate. You, mate. Fucking one of his, he gets his migraines. Luck, Cheers, mate. He gets his real bad migraines where he can't go out. Got one on the way here. I know. Dan, loads of info. Dan, loads of info. Don't leave it one game at a time. Tell the others that, yeah? Keep your shape. Get on the ball. If there's space in front of you, drive it this back five. Yeah. Drive at them. Yeah. Okay, but just keep the ball out wide. If you pass it, keep it down out wide, yeah? Yeah. Six defeats in a row for South End, and Dorking's desire to get at least a point in their bid for National League security is not a combination of factors that promises an open, expansive game of football. On the flip side, both sides are playing three at the back, and while Dorking do intend to be more resolute in defence as they take fewer risks, Mark does want the Wanderers to pass through the visiting defence. Dan, drop in! Come on! Dorking's play style has developed over the season, and the return of serial ball header Jason Pryor has given them more options when building attacks. Play off Jace! Play off Jace! Pryor's flick allows Jimmy Muir a chance to get in behind. Trying to get George round. Next throw to land on Jason's head is even more threatening. <laughs> Goalkeeper Colin Andeng Undi, who made his debut for the Shrimpers back when Dorking played there in the cup last season, claws the ball off the line to keep South End's sheet clean. Them high, Josh, them high ones for you. Same again, Jimmy! Jimmy! Go. Man coming, Jim. <laughs> Jim, that's for Jim! That's a foul, mate. It's, why are you going to fall over? Well, that was oddly calm. Spin! South end are breaking Dorking's advances down, and Daniel Mooney wants to play in Harry Cardwell. Jason! Jace! Tony! Dan! Dan! We're off for playing! Mark's concerned about how Dorking are playing out, as he doesn't want South End's press to keep them stuck in their own half. They're far more willing to go long these days, with the likes of Jimmy picking up the knockdowns. Next one, let's react! Next yeah, one! get a sausage out of that fray, mate. When the next clearance ends up back in Dorking's half, Cardwell must accept that his life is probably forfeit after doing this to Tony Craig. This isn't deemed to be a yellow card, so Tony lets him know exactly how many times he'll accept that from the referee. Four, oh, that is dangerous. If that was in the attacking third, that'd be a yellow at least. Yes, it would. That is dangerous. In Beardo's absence, Sammy is on a mic today. I've seen you play, that is dangerous. It's also worth noting that as a teacher, we have to say he never ever swears in this episode. Earlier in the season, a counter against Dorking was almost guaranteed to lead to a goal. So it's encouraging to see the likes of Joe Cook cutting such action out. Lock it up, lock it up, open up, Danza. Time! Deliver! Dan, lock it up, Dan! Shoot! 
Get in the box, Chase! Relax! Who? Back up. It's tight there, mate. Pocket balls, cookie. Right, Jim. Take him on! Take him on! South End are willing to defend deep, deep, deeply, deep, is it an adverb? And minimise the space for Dorking to attack into, but without a counter-attack threat, they're not doing much else. Overhead it, Dan! Dorking's mixture of long balls and slick passing is really beginning to work here. Dan, look it up! This goalie always has a fucking world here against us, mate. Jimmy Mewitt and George Franken combine to set up Seb Bowerman, who nearly squeezes the ball in. Always has a world here against us. Who's this fella? That's it, same line. While it's not quite as eye-catching as the manic early season style, Dawkins' new defensive shape is interesting nonetheless and gives them a chance to do what we've rarely seen, strike on the counter. Yes! yes. Jace, JP, keep, just keep, Jace, Jason. keep him this side. It goes, it goes, George, it goes. James McShane somehow outmuscles centre back Ollie Kensdale before teeing up Seb Bowman, who strikes hard and true to give Dorking the lead. Jimmy coming to you! See ya! That's what he's telling them to do now, Turks. What one? Bridge? Yeah, he's telling him to he's telling him to get rat this Ralphie off bit off the back. Don't yeah. mind that though. No, I'd well, rather just, that. just literally that, yeah. Mm. But Jimmy's just Jimmy, they're gonna try and do that a bit more, yeah? So just be aware. Yeah? Well, well, done. While Southend haven't been remotely convincing coming forwards, Mark thinks Cavana Miley does pose a significant threat. It's Josh's man that wants all the touches, yeah? yeah. Yeah, Josh has got to sit on this 17. More a release. Three. Who's got the three? Who's got the three? One. That cross is about as close as South End have come to threatening Dan Lincoln's goal. No. We might have to. Eh? I know it's not pretty, but they're not, they're not creating much. They're not doing much, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, we could easily just step down on and just, and just they've got to go direct. Makes a different game. You wonder what you sort of... Josh Taylor! <laughs> That's all he's going to get him to do is keep chopping it on the back. So that's all he keeps saying. We can either step in, I know, I know what you're saying. We, I know, yeah, I know, I've got it's hard work, yeah, exactly that, yeah. Maybe we'll just step in and do it. See what they do. Yeah. Well, they just send on, they'll have to go long. Yeah. All good, lads, well done. Well done. Don't mind giving them a bit of ball at one up. What you can't do is double screen. No, 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 no. We've already got one spare defensively. So nobody should be dragging you into... So if anyone's going in there, the 17 in the report, Miley wants all the touches in their team. It's, it's a stick or twist right here with whether we step in. Because we can just step in and, we've got, and, they, and we send them long. I'm not sure what to do. In any 3-5-2 competition, when you've got the ball, like they've done, you have to keep it. Because if not, then the opposition will keep the ball. So that's the first rule. So, Seb, I think you've been exceptional. You've kept the ball... You've checked out, you've gone home. We had a little spell there where George and Tone were just using Dan Lincoln. You then went long, didn't need to, one nil up. Just keep doing it, just keep doing it. Just makes sense. When the other team's got possession, they had a little spell, right? Just, we've got one extra there, so that makes sense. Just like they have. So we can just keep the ball, right? So now we're gonna full press them. 
So they're going to have to go long. And we've got three big centre-halves that are probably going to win everything. OK. But in midfield here, you've got to make sure that a 17 is picked up. Whoever's picking up, just pick him up. Wins us the game. Just wins us the fucking game. OK. And in possession, put your foot on it and fucking relax. Go to Dan Lincoln if you need to. And then drop off and use your overload again. Right? That's what I'd say. OK, boys? We're going to go and high-press them now. Man for man. Dan, we're going to step in. Yeah? OK, that's what we're going to do. They'll have to go long. It means we'll have to pick up the pieces. And then in possession, when we pick up the pieces, if we can't open out, just play straight back home. And we'll use our overload and off we go. All right? One nil up. Clean sheet. Yeah? Towards the fans. That's so far so good. All right, boys? Yep. Yeah? Good. <laughs> It's time to talk about this week's sponsor, Zed, or Zed Creative, I think they're called. Uh, they're a creative agency working with clients around the world, from private members clubs in Mayfair to prestigious car, it says Marks, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, sounds posh, in Asia. So Zed Creative makes stuff like uh, digital solutions, so newsletters and online promos. That's how I know them, because I've done some work for them myself. They're a really, really nice bunch. They're a small company, but they work with big businesses. Um, so it's quite personalised, exactly what you need. So if you run a business and you want to do some promo stuff online, talk to Zed. By 4-3-3. Well, according to Ant, the scout, Southend are playing 3-4-2-1. I mean, truth be told, we can't tell. What we do know is that Southend want Dorking to go long, and Mark's OK with that because it becomes a full-press game, and Southend will have to go long as well. And the Dorking defence should not be too troubled. Go direct! Tell him to go direct! Direct! Tony! Tony, full-press, go direct! Josh Taylor's long throws remain a threat, and Joe Cook makes sure the attack ends with a shot on goal. With the way the formations are now, the ball's likely to keep going over the head of James McShane. Thus, it's time for Mark to introduce the hot dog. Harry, three, four minutes, Mac Macca's coming off. If we don't change formation, he ain't touching the ball. You know what I'm saying? To complicate matters further, Joe Cook's nose is about to take another blow. After getting smashed in the face against Barnett, Joe's nose could really do without this. Joe, just go direct now. Just go direct. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's I just love to get Barnett. Just keep going direct. Yeah. Just keep fucking peppering them, okay? And they're going to have no ball. Nah. Everything they'll do will be direct as well. Yeah. The Shrimpers are finally beginning to take charge of the match, and that means Dorking are to have their defensive metal tested, good and proper like. Lincoln for the first time tonight with a shot that's fairly easily parried behind. Let's go, let's go, two, double sub. Frustratingly, the fourth official has disappeared up the line to deal with Joe Cook's bloody nose. Fourth, come in, make a sub! Mitch! Mitch, tell him we want to make a sub! Yep, Where's the nose one? Lino! Lino, we want to make a sub! Lino! Seb! Fourth! Seb, we want a sub, don't tell him! While they're fussing about the lino, Sammy is enjoying his job of directing the defensive tactical bits in Beardy's absence. Art's marked the five. Oh, yeah. And what, I mean, Baz, Josh, Baz, you mark, jo you mark Josh's man. Put Josh on the edge. Who's doing five now? You're doing uh, Cookie. Five. You mark five. Yeah, can you organise it, Art? I do it, mate. I want to fresh. This is fresh anyway. Fresh anyway. Baz, yeah, you take yeah. Josh's man. Josh on the edge. Mark finds something really funny here, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, that's Mike from Chold he's laughing with, so we'll text him and ask. Maka! Ottaway's introduction has an immediate and tangible impact. What ball? Go on, Sam! Go over, Sam. Take Dan, him on, Sam. Take him on. Get in. Oh, Wait, how does it save everything against us? Andy Andy tips Seb's shot around the post and Southend survive an attack of the Bowmans. Seb! Every time! I think the sting's going out of them. I think they're just, I think they're just, um, last five, been all right. 
Over here! Got a shirt full. Got lots. Chase, man. Poor chance that. Yeah. Harry loved that! With Harry throwing himself around like a rag doll and Seb crunching into tackles, Dorking are able to distract Southend from the job of trying to get back into the match. Hook, hook! Set, 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 set. Get yourself on, get yourself on, boys. Seb, go on, Seb. Good, Seb! Harry, um, Harry's causing them trouble out there, isn't he? Pick up! Pick up! Where's the seven? Josh. Put it in there, George. Oh, I love that. Go on, H. Oh. Harry's causing all sorts of problems and very nearly pokes Dorking into a comfortable lead. What happened there? Ox. What happened there? Ox, then their player, then Ox. Jimmy's tiring legs very nearly let South End in, only for Tony Craig to relish the chance to cover for him. George has done very well for that one. Controversy strikes late on when Dan Lincoln spots Jimmy going down with cramp. Is he stay off? Down. Who's Jimmy's gone down? down? Jimmy. Baz. Oh, Jimmy. Again. Oh, he's turned to He's turned to on. George tries to get Jimmy back into the game while Dan puts the ball out of play. South End, meanwhile, see no reason to give the ball back. Well, he kicked it out for him to get treatment. Yeah. And then he's fucking... We think Beardy probably would have murdered somebody, so Sammy steps in, but being a teacher, he doesn't swear. Okay, if you're better than that. With a few minutes to go, Bobby Joe's come on for Jimmy, but Bob's a little rusty, and that ultimately cost Jason the yellow card. Baz, round! Oh, Bobby, mate. Oh, oh, shut up! Don't worry, don't, don't bother, mate, then. They're on a losing streak, let them, don't, don't go into the zone. Don't go into the zone. Switch on to the team. Fourth, it's on the D. It's not there. It's done, it's done, boys. Don't worry, boys. That will not win or lose us the game. Don't uh, panic. Dorking can ride out the six minutes of injury time. They'll be taking their second win in a row. Sub Callum Powell gets himself sandwiched between Baz Fuller and Josh Taylor in an effort to win a cheap peno. For the next sequence, we're going to isolate the South End audio so that you can hear what it's like for a goalkeeper dealing with football banter. And I was doing air quotes when I said the B word. I hate that word. Get up, your wife's a whore! <laughs> Lincoln, your wife's a shit anyway! I asked for a refund! <laughs> How long we got, Fog, please? Buzz! When Joe Benson cuts inside, he unleashes a shot that, to South End eyes, hits Tony Craig's arm. We do not concur with that assessment, however, and thoroughly enjoy Tony's celebration of another shot blocked. Keep going, H! Deep into injury time, South End throw everything they've got at the Dorkin defence. Someone help him. Someone help him. No! A fourth official's urgency to get the game going again bemuses the talking bench. Yes! Fourth! Yes! Fourth! Yes! You're playing for them? 
It was quick. It was a bit too sharp. See the fucking fourth oh. running. With only seconds to go, Baz Fuller lunges into a challenge and misses the ball completely. That's a penalty. Yeah. That's a fucking penalty to see. Yeah, I think you're yeah. 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 Let's be completely clear about this. That's a stone bonking penalty. Baz has done an air shot. Sometimes you're just meant to win games. That's how it works. 20 seconds, Seb. Come on. Get off the seconds. Oh. Ooh. He's fucking done him there, by the way. The ending for Dorking contrasted starkly with the experience of the visitors who, having abused Dan Lincoln relentlessly, are perturbed when the goalkeeper has a little fun at their expense. Fucking Furious at their own team, the angry young men shake the goal in disgust, stealing the GoPros. Good, good. I mean, fantastic clean sheet. Uh, brilliant defensively. Dan, very good. Uh, Tony, they was all right tonight, South End, to be fair. But see, you know, winning down to football is just about getting it strategically right. They're not a team that scores massive fucking goals. I thought we could defend them. We did. You know, that's what we had to do. That's what we need to do when we have these away games. That's what we've got, got to go and do is be a lot more rigid. Um, defended brilliantly all fucking night, to be fair. Um, and... You know, I kind of feel like it was quite it was kind of textbook and I feel like up until we scored, we're just playing quite open and the way we play and we're creating a lot of chances. And when we scored, I feel like we were a bit more protective of the ball, a little bit like, gambling less. And that's all right. That's all right. And, you know, even I sometimes, oh, fuck, this is fucking boring. Do you know what I mean? I do. I really do. But, you know, we got it strat strategy right. The subs were, were right. The subs done well. And we just sat in there and saw the game out, mate. Do you know what I mean? They weren't going to score in a month for Sundays. Not sure they had fucking a shot, did they? I'm not fucking, did you have a shot or not? Like, you know, do they fuck down? Don't fucking make, <laughs> don't make out you've done something, you know, done fuck all. Um, now boys, wait, listen, two games, six points, lovely. I told you, I think we can win every single game. And I think what we can do, if we can choose when we're gonna play football, when we're gonna get the ball down, we can choose when we're gonna go, now nah, fuck it, go win the battles. And, uh, and, that, and that's what we'll do, yeah? I really wanna go away from home and win a game of football uh, on Saturday. Uh, Dag Is it a big pitch, Dagnum? Is it big? No? no? Um, but yeah, so listen, so we just basically ticked the big fucking box there. Those Saturday, Tuesday games, I fancied us for four points. Yeah, listen, boys, I think over the two games, really fucking good. Do you know what I'm saying? Really good. We've given away one peno in two games of football, which I know, you know what I mean? It's, it's fucking, you know, that's a massive improvement for where we were. So really good. And I think what'll happen is as we get used to being a bit more rigid and a bit more fucking like, you know, um, robust and not as expansive, we'll get used to just keeping the ball. I told you, there's teams that are in the top five of this league, mate, and they are all, to a man, you know, just robust, really. That's all they are. Do you know what I mean? So it's good to see that side of us, yeah? I thought we were very resilient. Well done. Fucking six points in two games. Where are we in the fucking table? We're in the playoffs, yeah or not? Well done. Well done, boys. We've got a late playoff charge coming or not? <laughs> so the results are shit when they, yeah, look. Gateshead won. Gates are flying, aren't they? Yeovil must have played. It's not on here, but they must have played. They were playing. Were they? I thought Yeovil were playing tonight. Yeah, have a look. Should I have a look on there? What if they it? lost, then it's an all right night. That's five points. It will be if... What are you looking at? Are you looking at a map? 
Yeah, no, Luke's <laughs> looking at a map of Yeovil. <laughs> no details there, mate. You can only win your own games. Yeah. Obviously, um, I think that, that what I'd say is that um, you saw the boys in midfield, I thought they got quite tired. Moro, Josh from Saturday, Tuesday, I think they tired quite a lot during the game. I think they tired quite a lot. And, You've really got the bat free and keeper to, to, to thank for getting through that. But I mean, other teams do that week in, week out in this league. The fucking defenders winning the games. How many games have we fucking drawn or lost just because the bat four have been decent? Do you know what I mean? So it's good that that, that, that boots on our foot, yeah? So all we can do is tick our fucking boxes, really. Gate said, I said all along, they, they ain't going down all, in a million years. Gate said, they're too good to go down, mate. So it'd be the other boys there. But, you know, that's um, fucking maximum fucking points, yeah? Exceptional, really. Six points out of two games, do you know what I mean? And also, I've only conceded a fucking penalty. Yeah? It's very good, yeah? Fucking happy days. Well done. Well done. Cheers, Sammy. Well done. Um, first clean sheet of the season. Yeah! <laughs> Beardy out! Sammy in! We know in advance we're gambling with things. We know that we're playing a bit too open or playing like one of our sort of smaller ball players in midfield or playing Dan Gallagher there. And, you know, if your mortgage is on it or your wife's being held at gunpoint, you play Dan Gallagher. If you're sort of down a casino with your mates, you play Luke Moore. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's just basics, really. The amount of tackles you put in, the tracking that you did, what got into you today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think, it's, um, I think it's, been, it's been coming. It's just like an adjustment period to the league and I was building up in form and like new players bedding in and everyone understanding how people play. But it's just also just so important to win all of our games. Like everyone around us keeps winning. So just once we got ahead, it was like we just have to keep this lead and we have to get the win. And, and the lads dug in and it was, it was a brilliant night, wasn't it? There's definitely a belief growing that we can keep clean sheets. And today when we went ahead, I don't think they had a clear cut chance. And it just, when you're, when you're losing games, you always think oh, the next one's going to be tough. But now we're in this bit of vein of form you just got more confidence in every game and, and, it, and it comes out in performances and clean sheets. We got beat at York. The decision was taken that day that we're, we're going to play Will over skill. And I, th I just think we just, you know, look wide open and you just sort of think to yourself, I'm not going not gonna to give these teams a fucking leg up, basically. But I'm more interested in your own development as a manager and your no, I've known own... it all along anyway. I've known it all along. I've known it all along. Teams have been in this division fucking 15 years. Like, I've been looking at it and thinking, right, where are we? What do we need? Who can play it? Who can't? I know that we need the likes of Aaron Kuhl in there once he's fully fit. And So I know that you can be... Uh, listen, I, I, I worked it out bloody quickly that you can be really... I'm going to use the word resilient and... Resilient and unimpressive and literally be in the top five of this league. And that's no disrespect to this league, but there are managers that I've watched, and I saw it from an early stage, and fair play to them, they set the team up, territory-based, they get them used to hunting down second balls, winning battles, they have the odd quality player that can do a little bit. I'm not a renowned defender, but... <laughs> I, th I think it's just the minimum is, 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 is hard work. And when we play those 3-5-2 matchups, it's just making sure that you have the beating of the person you're playing against. And, and it actually becomes quite simple because you've got one man to mark out of the game. And if you're doing that, you're, you're kind of doing your defensive job. So it actually makes it quite easy, that, those formation chip switches. Somebody on TikTok, and don't take this seriously, yeah, yeah. because I, we all get shit. Someone on TikTok said, oh, that Bowman, he's only got one trick. And when the defenders figure it out, he's done. How many tricks have you got, Seb? One. <laughs> <laughs> I could reel off honestly seven, eight, nine teams in this division that are really brilliantly effective but unimpressive. We need to find a way of being both impressive and resilient because I wouldn't turn up if it was fucking like that every week, to be frank. I wouldn't be here. I can't I fuck that. And I don't think the fans would love the club the way they do either. The fans come here to watch the way we play football. But this is a emergency mission, isn't it? You know what I mean? Nine games to go, what are you going to do? You're gonna, you have to win some fucking games of football. So we've got to do what we've got to do. Do you know what I mean? 
If people didn't subscribe to us on Patreon, this show would not exist. We need it to keep going. So if you feel so inclined and you want some extra content, behind the scenes stuff and seeing how things are made, extended episodes, exclusive content from interviews and director's commentaries, that kind of stuff, then join us on patreon.com slash punch of amateurs.